right, let's bring out uh, the great one. The great one. Yeah. Uh, first Gleason. guest is possibly, I'm sorry? Jackie Gleason? Is oh, no, I think... Uh, say, wouldn't that be a good booking? Uh, our first guest tonight is possibly the most uh, phenomenal and probably the richest professional athlete in the world today. We'll clear all of this up in a minute. Here he is in action, ladies and gentlemen. He has been the NHL MVP in eight of his 11 seasons. He holds 49 NHL records, and at the age of 28, he is just 13 points shy of the all-time scoring record. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Wayne Gretzky. Wayne, nice to see you. How are you? Thank you very much for being here. Nice to see you. Congratulations on a good season, although I guess you'd rather be, be playing now than, than doing other things at this point. Well, it'd be nice. Yeah. How many, how many years did you guys in Edmonton win the uh, Stanley Cup? We went to uh, Stanley Cup final five times, uh -huh. and uh, we won four championships. We, uh, we were a team that grew up together as, uh, as, as kids, as 18-year-olds, and all the way along. We had uh, a tremendous group of people, and... Uh, it uh, unfortunately ended, but uh, in life, you know, things go on and things happen for reasons, and uh, I'm, I'm very pleased to be in, in Los Angeles. Yeah, well, good for you, and, and it's possible that one day you'll get a Stanley Cup there. But, I mean, people would, they would die if, if a hockey team in California, forget it, in, in Los Angeles, won a Stanley Cup, wouldn't they? I think that uh, they'd be awful surprised, uh, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, do, do they have any idea what the Stanley Cup is? Listen, we've, we've come a long way. Yeah. We've come a long way. It's, uh, they've had 20 years of hard luck, but... Uh, uh... <laughs> uh, now, have you... Now, I know that the, uh, you've done better as a team this year. The Kings have yeah. done better, I guess, than they have in any other previous season. But you, you've also increased the attendance out there? Yeah. Well, as, as anything goes, if people are entertained, they'll come and watch. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, we were an entertaining team, and the people enjoyed uh, watching us play and, and left happy. But... Uh, the bottom line in professional sports is you got to win, and hopefully next year we do a yeah. lot better. Uh, and it must, I know you've talked about this a million times, but you must have uh, tremendously mixed feelings when you go back to Edmonton and see the, the old building and the old neighborhood and the old uh, fans and stuff. Uh, it, it's hard. Yeah. Uh, you, you develop a lot of friendships, not only with the hockey team, but off the ice also sure. with the people of Edmonton. Yeah. It's a small town of 500,000 people, and the fans almost become your friends. It's the same people you see all the time. They're always talking about the hockey team. And yeah, it's tough. It was tough to leave there, but... Uh, now, the, uh, the trade was your idea? Because at the time it happened, they said, well, Wayne wants to go to California to be with his wife. Everybody could understand that, of course. And then later we heard that, uh, what's his name, Pockington, <laughs> uh, was uh, decided he would get rid of you now to make as much money as he could. Uh, I mean, I I somewhere in between is the truth or what? Well, I guess that's the best statement. Somewhere in between is the truth. I, uh, I, uh, he wanted to trade me, and I and I wanted to leave. That yeah. was the bottom line because I got to a point where uh, eventually I knew I was going to be gone. I knew I was going to be traded right. because of the contract situation that I had. So he was kind enough to ask me which team I wanted to go to, and uh, it came down to two teams: Los Angeles and Detroit. What and about the Rangers? What would it have killed you to be? <laughs> you know, they have the Rangers haven't been in a Stanley Cup final since 1840. <laughs> That's one more than the it's, Kings. It's been a hundred, nearly 130 years since they were in it. Uh, anyway, I would we love to play in you. Well, we got to do a commercial here. We'll be right back with uh, Wayne Gretzky in a minute. That's right. That's right. Like, like we haven't had enough of Plant Boy. Uh, what do you know about the guy, uh, the Soviet hockey player, defected uh, last week? Do you know the man? Have you ever skated against him in international competitions? I've watched anywhere? him. Seen I've, him play? Yeah, he's good he's, player. Yeah, he's the. Uh, He's the best player in the Soviet Union. Uh -huh. He's uh, he's playing the national team for three years. He's only 20 years old. He started at 17, and uh, he's kind of thrown a little wrench into the plans, I think, of the National Hockey League because now they're caught in a situation where, you know, they they would like to stay on good good terms with the Soviets. Right. But, but uh, there was talk of players uh, from uh, Russia and the Soviet Union yeah. coming to play in the NHL. Yeah, they, they have five or six really good players in their prime right now who they've said can go mm -hmm. come and play in the National Hockey League. Um, and what I think is going to happen now is this is going to make it tougher 
Uh, it's a situation where I'm sure the NHL doesn't like to be in, but... Uh, but Buffalo had drafted him, right? Yeah, most yeah. of the players have been drafted. Mm -hmm. they, we have 10 rounds in the NHL, and most of the players get drafted in the 7th, 8th, yeah. ninth round. Uh, so most of them have been drafted and already designated to teams like Fedosov is in New Jersey and et cetera. So, um, It'd be interesting uh, to see what happens when the guy finally lays eyes on Buffalo. <laughs> so, right. Go back. It's only, only a joke, of course. It's only a joke. You know it's a joke. I know it's a joke. It's a hockey joke. It could have been worse. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, uh, before I left Indianapolis back in like 73 or 74, yeah. I was uh, an avid hockey fan. I would go to see uh, the World Hockey League in those days, had a franchise in Indianapolis, the Racers, and I would go every night to the home games. And then I guess the year I left, you came in uh -huh. and as a 17-year-old started playing for them. What are your memories of Indianapolis? Well, I, the strangest thing for me playing in Indianapolis was I was only 17 years old. The whole team was 27, 28. It was an older bunch of players. W were you any good as a team? Uh, no, we weren't. Yeah. We, we were <laughs> average, uh, to say the least. We were six-team league at that, that time. We were about a fifth-place team, so we weren't that good. This was an odd league. They, they had teams in, like, Pensacola, Florida, <laughs> down there in the hockey belt. <laughs> yeah. Tempe, Arizona. <laughs> but uh, I was 17, and, and uh, it was an older team. And it was hard because they, they all tried to take care of me. I lived with a family. Everyone else, of course, uh, had their own houses and that sort of thing. Uh, and after the games, it was interesting. The players, you know, they go with their wives. They go to, uh, to restaurants. And uh, the only place I could go to were places like Steak and Shake. Yeah, and that sort yeah. Of thing. you can do a lot worse. I used to drive by and I'd honk my horn. And, uh, <laughs> And then the, the franchise just crumbled underneath you. Is that what happened? I got sold. Yeah. I got to sold uh, to uh, Edmonton. But at the time we got sold, the uh, three of us who were sold uh, uh, were on a private jet going to Edmonton, and we didn't know if we were going to Edmonton or Winnipeg. You, you weren't sure which way the deal had fallen then, huh? At that time, the NHL, they, they used to play backgammon, I think, and they'd have bets <laughs> to who was going to get who and how much. And that's true. That happened a lot. And... Uh, we didn't know where we were going. Halfway through the, the plane ride, the uh, pilot said, we're going to Edmonton. You've been traded to Edmonton and uh, asked who was <laughs> going to... Did you get this information from the pilot? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Please observe the no smoking sign. And by the way, you've been traded to Edmonton. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and, uh, and then he comes back and he says, uh, and of course I was 17 still, and uh, says, now who's going to pay for this flight? And uh, <laughs> the wow. three of us looked at each other, and uh, he said, well, just give me a credit card. And uh, I didn't have a credit card at that time. And uh, my buddy, Eddie Meal, said, well, I've got a $600 limit. And uh -huh. pilot grabbed it. <laughs> and uh, that's what we used. It sounds like something that would happen on Eastern Airlines now, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, and, and this weekend, you're hosting Saturday Night Live. That should be a lot of fun, huh? Well, I'm looking forward to it. Everyone has been uh, kind to me. I'm, I'm by no means an actor, but I've had a tremendous time, and I yeah. think it's a great honor. I'm to sure it'll be a great deal of fun. Nice to see Thank you. Congratulations you on a great career. Wayne Gretzky, kids, and uh, we'll be back after special invitation. Thank you.